For my second project this Halloween, I wanted to make a small graveyard to put next to my driveway, featuring geeky tombstones and some lamps that would turn on automatically after dark and have sort of a spooky flicker. As usual, you can find all the files and everything in the description. After printing the tombstones, I decided to give them a coat of a stone looking spray paint and then give it a few coats of a clear coat just so the paint would survive outdoors. I have printed these uh, fairly large lampposts and I will be gluing in some uh, windows to it that are printed in uh, transparent PETG and uh, I will be putting a star LED in this which means you can get a lot of light if you want to but I will be using a resistor to cap it to around 30 milliamps or so just to save uh, battery power since I will be battery powering this and to house the batteries I printed this coffin and here are the uh, window parts that I will glue in and here we have two ports for JSD connectors that I'm going to be using because it's very easy to get a hold of those uh, and uh, here it has a socket where I'm going to be putting a battery holder and the socket here is for one of these little spark fun perf boards so you can get at about a dollar each and it's going to uh, screw in and uh, that's going to house the circuitry and then finally it has uh, a hole here which is going to be for a light sensor so it can turn on automatically when it gets dark now obviously you could just skip the battery driven part and simply plug it in through a USB connector or through a wall wart into uh, your mains and drive it that way and uh, then you can uh, just lower the resistor values for the uh, star LEDs and get something much much brighter that can actually light up an area but since this is going to be sitting outdoors I'm going to rely on a battery operated solution but of course because I want to have this thing outside I'm going to set the uh, LEDs to a lower current using higher value resistors just so I get uh, more battery power let's take a look at the circuit first I'm going to need uh, the SparkFun perf board obviously and for that I'm going to use a socket so that I can reprogram the uh, microcontroller which is probably going to be needed because uh, the uh, light sensors I'm going to use vary a bit and then I'm going to use an 80 tiny 13 which are like uh, 50 cents a piece very cheap uh, microcontrollers you could uh, also substitute this one for uh, an 80 tiny 85 and that would work just as well but uh, it might be a little bit overkill depending on how you want to use this but you can obviously make some cooler logic if you wanted to do that it's a little bit uh, limited with one kilobyte of flash on this thing and then for the LEDs I'm going to be using these bead LEDs these are rated for one watt I'm not going to be driving them anywhere near that but I'm still going to be driving them high enough that uh, I might want to use some transistors and for those I'm going to be using just some cheap 2N2222 transistors and for base resistors I'm going to be using uh, one kilo ohm and uh, you can calculate ex the exact value that you want to use however these uh, are cheap Chinese ones that I bought at like uh, a cent or two a piece and they didn't come with a data sheet so I have no idea what, what the, the ratings for these are but uh, one kilo ohm seems to have worked pretty well for me so far so and then I'm gonna use a 39k resistor for uh, the voltage divider for the light sensor and I'm going to be using one of these uh, cheap photoresistors. What you're going to want to do is probably just to hold, press your finger down on this thing and then measure the resistance and then use a similar resistance on the resistor that you're going to be connecting to it. Uh, it doesn't matter that much, they just need to be sort of similar and then you can always adjust it in the software later. But uh, for the one I've been testing I think 39k should do pretty well. And then I have these uh, 56 ohm resistors that I'm going to use to limit the current to the LEDs. And finally for the microcontroller, just a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. First I will be assembling these uh, star LEDs. You can probably get these pre-assembled if you wanted to. But uh, I, I bought a big pack from China as usual. So the so first thing you need to do is uh, take a close look at one of these so here, I'm not sure how visible it is. On the legs are tiny, tiny markings. They're kind of difficult to see. Well, this one has a plus on it, and this one has a minus, so this one is negative. 
These uh, stars also have markings and you'll want to uh, put the LED across these uh, thinner ones. So this one would be uh, negative and this one would be positive. I'll start by putting some uh, solder onto the bottoms of the of one of these. Be careful when you pick it up because it's probably going to be hot, especially if you're soldering with uh, lead-free solder. And I'll put it on the negative side. I'll put a little bit of solder onto the negative pad here. I want to try and really mash it down there. Well, there's a metal bit at the bottom of uh, the bead which serves as a heat sink. And you want to try and make sure that that one has contact with the heat sink by mashing it down. Now that's not going to matter that much with these ones because uh, in this uh, particular circuit I'm only going to be driving these at uh, 30 to 40 milliamps which is going to generate so little heat. Uh, these things are rated for 1 watt which is going to be like 300 milliamps or so. However you're likely going to get a higher life span out of these if you don't drive them that hard. It's easier to use one of these and slot it in than, than try to make some sort of socket for two normal LEDs and then if you use two normal LEDs then you're going to have two light sources and that's going to look weird so I kind of want to try and do this with only one light emitter. But if you wanted to you could drop the resistor value of this significantly and then you can make them so that they're really bright so you can see the area around them on the ground. But for this one it's going to be enough that you can see that it's clearly on and it's casting a little bit of light onto the surroundings. These ones are always in pairs so this one is negative and this one is positive. So I'll put a little bit of solder on this. Even if I was to drive these at 100 to 300 milliamps it, there's no way it would overheat. Just because it's going to sit outside in uh, Swedish late October conditions which means it usually gets frosty. Now that could be pretty cool though because uh, because then you're probably gonna see some uh, vapor clouds coming off of it so the lights would be generating like a cloud of mist if I put them out like that at night. But the batteries would last about a day, so I don't want to go and change the batteries every day. Next, these things, I made it so you can snap the hat on. So then you just take the hat off, push the wire through. And then, it's probably not going to be very visible on the camera here, but uh, it has a socket, so if you just push on it firmly, it's going to stick without any glue or anything. Though you can use some glue. Actually, I would recommend maybe using a bit of glue on it, just because uh, you can seal it so it becomes watertight. Now this wire is sticking out through the bottom, which isn't great. The entire thing is hollow, so if you put it on like some dirt or something, you can just put a stick through and make sure it doesn't fall over. But it also has a hole here. You can get the wire out the side instead of having to sneak it through the bottom. There we go. To get the windows on here, I'm going to use some of my good old fashioned super glue. As usual, try not to get this on your fingers because it's going to stick immediately. But if you do, you can take some of the acetone that you should have if you have a 3D printer and um, you can use a little bit of that to uh, clean it off with so you just spread it evenly now I did print 
I did print one of these using my multi-material printer just so I could uh, so I wouldn't have to glue the windows on but that wasted a lot of material just push it down a little bit yeah I used too much glue there it's a little difficult because you can't really see why you have glued when it's a black filament. Yeah, I can hear mice running around on the attic above me. I have one of those bucket traps up there. I also have some no-kill traps. But they haven't gone for those for some reason. I have a little bit of glue here after because you can see when you push it down you can uh, see parts here that you missed. We we'll just spread it nice and evenly across there. The first thing I will do is, as usual, solder on the socket for the microcontroller. So that's the socket for the microcontroller. It has a little dip up here uh, at the top, uh, so that will be the top of the microcontroller. Like if you look at the microcontroller, you can see it has a small indentation on one of the sides and that will be the top. Because if you uh, plug it in in reverse without any reverse polarity protection which this thing is not going to have you're going to have a bad time because it's going to get really hot and you're probably going to break it. But what you need to do next is put on the decoupling capacitor and I uh, pretty much always put that on the bottom. So I cut the legs Let's put the transistors on, and this uh, perf board is connected in rows of 3x3, three three, so I'll put them in the middle of those threes. And these are the uh, transistors, the 2N2222. If I look at the data sheet for just generic 2N2222, I can see that the base is in the middle, so let's hook up the base through these 1K resistors. The base of these should go to PB0 and PB1. This is kind of why I wish that these boards were double-sided. Maybe it would be worthwhile to uh, write down what I have actually done now. I've attached the uh, decoupling capacitor. I've attached the um, transistors and I've attached the base resistors. Well, the, the transistors aren't fully attached yet. I need still need to go to ground and I need to go to the go here. So next, I think I will attach the LEDs, which should go to the collector of the transistor through a resistor of uh, 56 ohms. And uh, looking again at the 212222. The collector is on the rightmost pin. I think I'll just go straight across like this. It's a simple circuit, so I don't have to be uh, that careful with utilizing the space. And the second resistor needs to go on here as well. Now I can put the uh, ground from the LEDs on uh, these ones. If you wanted to change the brightness of the LEDs to give them more or less current, you would uh, just replace these two resistors now. That's why I didn't put the resistors in the lamps themselves. It's so you can adjust the brightness uh, through uh, these. These two uh, transistors need to be hooked up to ground. I have ground coming in here to the ground pin of the microcontroller but uh, I've also made it across here so that it goes to the emitter of the uh, 212222 however this emitter here also needs to be uh, connected up to ground but I'm gonna need a ground connection for the light sensor as well so I might as well put that there so I can uh, bend the leg of it and then hook those up while I'm at it so that way I'm utilizing the space better then I'm going to need a lot of voltage connectors also. 
because the two LEDs also need to be connected directly to the battery. Yep, then one needs to be bent down this way. So now uh, ground is connected uh, on these three and uh, goes around and all the way up here. Before I connect the uh, JST connectors up, I should probably put the, the 39K resistor on. And that should be on PB3 going to PB4. And this is because PB3 is an output that uh, enables the sensor. That way you don't have uh, to have it going through this resistor to ground all the time. And you're going to save yourself some uh, current when it's in sleep mode. So at daytime this thing is going to draw like 5 microamps. I'm not going to solder this one in yet because I need to put uh, a connector on it. Which is going to go to one end of the uh, light sensor. And now we can solder those two together. This will now be the positive lead going through the light sensor and this one will be uh, back to ground through the light sensor. And here we have ground to the uh, to the battery, which means that I need one wire to go to the voltage side of the battery. And I think this one will be long enough. And then we'll go here uh, up on the right side. Just trying to get it to stick while I get some solder on there. It's probably going to fall out now. It did not. I am amazed. Now I need to get some. Uh, JST connectors on for the uh, light outputs. And this is a low side switch so we're toggling ground with the uh, transistors because they're MPN transistors. So that means that uh, the LED ground should uh, come in here. So we'll put the black side on. And we're gonna need the full length of these uh, connectors. There, that's the grounds connected, but uh, we also need to connect the uh, connect them up to voltage. If I push the resistor here aside a little bit, then I should be able to uh, put them here, and then from here, pull a little wire up to uh, the battery input. And then we need a wire going from here up to here, just to uh, connect uh, the LEDs up to uh, the battery input. I think I'll start by just mashing this one in. You probably want to use some tweezers or something when doing this because this wire is going to get very hot very quickly. But I am a licensed idiot so I have a complete disregard for the health of my fingers. That should be working now, so I think the next part will be to start hooking up the case. The, the case does have a backstop, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but uh, it only slides in from one direction and then it gets stuck for the uh, light sensor. So I'm going to put it in. Snip the legs a bit so I can solder them. And then I'm going to use some traditional glue for this. I would recommend just using hot glue for this, but I didn't want to wait for my glue gun to heat up. So I'm just going to let it sit like this for a while and let gravity do the rest. I want to use a battery box with uh, three AA batteries for this. And I'm going to be using rechargeable batteries. You can also use normal batteries. The AT Tiny has a max voltage of uh, 6 volts, I think, and you're not going to reach 6 volts with just 3 AA batteries. You're, it's going to get a little bit brighter if you use uh, normal batteries, but think of the environment. Go for rechargeable. But connecting the battery is quite easy, since I have these uh, pins just for that. I just need to strip the ends. Add a bit of solder and then make sure to get the polarity right, otherwise you're going to let the magic smoke out. If you wanted to, you could uh, also use some reverse polarity protection with a diode. 
or a full bridge rectifier but uh, you're gonna be wasting power if you do that so you might as well just solder it down the right way and make sure you put the batteries in the right way it shouldn't be difficult if you ever put in the AA battery into something before you'll know how to do it there's one more thing I need to glue right now and that would be the uh, JST connectors here and I've prepared by cutting out the support material that these are printed with and uh, using an exacto knife to clean them up a little bit so all I'm gonna need here is a tiny bit of super glue to keep them in place it's just, like just a drop should be enough because they're they're already gonna sit very tight in there I'm just gonna make sure they're the same side up it doesn't really matter but it looks better that way oh, I can go through a little bit more I think yep something along those lines will do I'm gonna be attaching the uh, plugs as well and I want these to be kinda short because uh, the red and black is very visible what you should consider doing is uh, saving these whenever you're cutting them off because they, they come in very handy in other circuits I always have uh, some laying near my soldering station and these will hook up to the uh, lamp posts since this one is going to reside outdoors I'm going to put some heat shrink on it now I don't upload very often but I haven't been making any projects recently that uh, would be useful to share like I made a couple of one-offs just for my house like I have a dehumidifier in my basement which I'm gonna have to keep running until the uh, until the snow starts and the problem with that is that the uh, the water tank for it is quite small so I made a small device that will uh, pump it out into a bucket whenever it starts to get full Oops. and uh, then uh, it warns whenever the bucket gets full and then it stops pumping and then get the heat shrink over that all the way up I could use uh, a hot air gun for this or you can gently use the uh, soldering iron if you're lazy like me just try not to burn yourself that this one should tolerate the outdoor conditions a little bit better another glue has set so let's solder on the light sensor the direction here doesn't matter this will make a good time to uh, actually test the circuit so you're gonna need your uh, microcontroller put it in the socket and then go and get some batteries and then it's gonna turn on for a little while and it's gonna be flickering as it's programmed to do though uh, it, it turns off because it's bright in here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my finger in front of the light sensor down here and then remove the battery put it back in again so that it thinks it's dark and then it lights up and then it should be flickering um, they, the two lamps can flicker independently there we go so then if I t take my thumb off here it'll take a little while but eventually it's going to turn off there we go and uh, now you can hold the thumb over it and then it's going to take 30 to 40 seconds to turn on again and the reason for that is uh, I wanted it to take multiple readings before assuming it's daylight again 
because when I first tested this and put it out like near my driveway there were cars driving by and the headlights would turn off the circuit and that would reset the timer because uh, it's programmed with a timer so after these turn on they'll be on for somewhere around six hours and then they are going to uh, turn off until it gets bright again and then uh, when it gets dark it, they turn on and they are on for another six hours cycle so that with uh, these batteries and with the uh, level of resistance here they uh, the batteries should last about uh, seven to eight days now we just gotta put everything together inside of the case so I'm gonna take one battery out just so it's not live while I'm working on it and I would recommend using hot glue here but I don't feel like uh, fetching my glue gun so I'm just gonna use some more of this traditional glue. I think the first thing I'm gonna do will be to attach the battery box. Put some glue here on the bottom and especially around the edges. And there's an opening here on the side for where the uh, battery wires will come out. But now the glue is on so I'll put the batteries in. In the meantime I'm also going to be adding a bit of glue to the wires here so that they stay put. At this point we can also put in the circuit here which needs to go in in a specific direction because there's a screw hole in it. Yeah I think uh, one of these wires to the batteries is gonna have to go on the other side, otherwise it's not gonna be long enough. I can use a laptop screw here. Let's gently screw that down there so it sticks. This is what they, it will look like now. But uh, I just gotta press down here to make sure the wires will stick in there. To be honest, yeah, you should probably use hot glue here because this is gonna take forever to uh, dry out. This is what it all should look like when done. And uh, if I hold the, my finger now in front of the light sensor, and there we go, it's uh, starting up. If you're gonna use this one indoors, all you have to do is uh, snap the lid on. and uh, place it wherever you want. Removing the lid can be a little bit tricky but you if but if you don't have any long decent nails you can use then you can use a flat screwdriver. There we go. But since this one is going to sit outside I'm just gonna smear some silicone on the edges and that should help seal it. I get a little on the lid also while I'm at it. Just a little bit. And now I'll let that sit over the night. Printing all these tombstones did take quite a while, but uh, I think it turned out quite well. And I also added a couple of pumpkins and some leaves to make it look a bit more spooky. And now all that's left to do for me is to wait for Halloween. I've also noticed that I'm getting close to 100 subscribers. I'm thinking that if I do reach 100 subscribers, I might uh, give it a try to make a small series showing how to get started with all of this from scratch, showcasing the basic components, how to program Arduino, and eventually making your own programmer to uh, program 80 tiny devices with Arduino. But if not, Christmas is always coming up, so I'm probably gonna make some projects for that as well. Have a happy Halloween.